Hey, 42 here. There is a strange, unexplainable phenomenon that plagues the stock market. It's called the Ting High Effect. There is a huge and very sudden drop in the stock market whenever a film or television series starring Hong Kong actor Adam Cheng is released. If this is the strangest thing you've ever heard, then you're not alone. It may seem completely crazy, but it's true. The stock market is an enormous global beast that constantly goes up or goes down, and which direction it will go in the future is determined by millions of social, economic and political factors. Many of the world's greatest mathematicians and analysts have spent years attempting to accurately predict the stock market. All have failed. Sudden drops in the markets are usually caused by major news releases. The release of a new film or TV show should have no impact whatsoever on the markets. Yet, despite this, on the 5th of October 1992, the first episode of a TV series called The Greed of Man starring Hong Kong actor Adam Cheng was aired on TV. The Hang Seng Index, which measures the combined strength of Hong Kong stock markets, fell by 600 points. And then, two years later, Instinct made its TV debut, starring Adam Cheng. The Hang Seng Index fell by over 2,000 points. Three years later, Adam Cheng stars in Once Upon a Time in Shanghai. Guess what? The Hang Seng Index fell by 300 points. This happened time and time again. Over 25 years and many TV and film releases, every single time the stock market unexplainably dropped due to Adam Cheng's appearance in said shows. This phenomenon has been speculated upon by stockbrokers for decades. Not one has been able to explain the true cause, but some investors argue that the first one or two occurrences were genuine coincidences, and it has since become a self-fulfilling prophecy. When a great number of people believe something to be true, even if it isn't, they can actually make it happen through their subsequent actions. And so, due to the so-called Ting Hai effect happening in the past, now, whenever a TV show or film starring Adam Cheng is released, it becomes big news in Hong Kong, especially amongst financial investors. Because financial investors are expecting the stock market to drop upon the show's release, they could actually be fulfilling this prophecy and making it happen themselves through their investments. And thus, a one-time coincidence has become a regularly occurring phenomenon due to crowd psychology. If you think a Chinese film star buggering up the stock market is strange, you won't believe what I'm about to tell you. This tale of coincidence is between two American presidents, none other than Abraham Lincoln and John F. Kennedy. The timelines of their individual lives are so unbelievably similar to each other that many people have a hard time believing it to be just a coincidence. Firstly, Abraham Lincoln was elected to Congress in 1846. John F. Kennedy was elected to Congress in 1946, precisely 100 years later. Then, Lincoln was elected president in 1860. JFK was elected president in 1960, again exactly 100 years apart. Then, both presidents and their wives lost their children whilst living in the White House. But it gets even weirder. Both presidents were shot in the head, and both were shot dead on a Friday. Both men were shot in the back of the head and in the presence of their wives. Lincoln was shot inside Ford's theatre, and Kennedy was shot in a Lincoln car made by Ford. When it comes to presidential coincidences, there's something very odd going on with their hands. 10% of the global population are left-handed, but that figure is massively skewed when it comes to US presidents. 50% of the previous 12 presidents were left-handed. That's five times higher than the norm. Although there may be more to this than pure coincidence, some scientists believe that left-handed people are more capable of quicker and broader thinking. This is backed up by the fact that a much higher percentage of historical geniuses, Einstein, Isaac Newton and Charles Darwin, for example, were left-handed when compared to the general population. But 
There are some incredible stories of coincidences from history that have no logical explanation. Bermuda, 1975. A man is riding a moped down the street when suddenly a taxi carrying a passenger hits him at high speed. He is killed instantly. Exactly one year later, the dead man's brother is killed in the exact same way. And when I say the exact same way, I mean he was driving the same moped, not a similar moped, the exact same one. He was struck down in the exact same spot by the same taxi driver, and get this, the taxi driver was carrying the same passenger. To top it off, the brothers were both 17 years old when they died. That's seriously spooky. A man named Henry Ziegland knew all too well about coincidences. In 1883, he broke up with his girlfriend. She was so upset by this that she committed suicide. The girl's brother was so angry that he hunted down Ziegland and shot him in the head. The brother then immediately turned the gun on himself and took his own life. Unaware to the deceased brother, his bullet had not actually killed Ziegland. It narrowly missed, grazing his cheek and lodged itself in a tree behind him. The bullet remained in that tree for many years. Until, one day, Ziegland decided to chop down the tree. It was such a hardy tree that Ziegland had to turn to dynamite to blow up the tree instead. He blew the tree to smithereens with a few sticks of dynamite. But the explosion propelled the bullet from the tree straight into Ziegland's head, killing him. The very same bullet that was meant for his head all those years ago. Unbelievable coincidences can sometimes follow a single theme. For example, and this is seriously weird, it turns out that lost precious rings have a long history of turning up inside the bellies of fish. I've not lost it, this is a genuine thing. In fact, if you've lost your wedding ring, you'd be better off going fishing than actually looking for it. Accounts of this go all the way back to 500 BC, when the fierce tyrant of Samos, Polycrates, threw his gold and emerald seal ring into the sea. Then, six days later, a fisherman brought a fish to Polycrates' door and presented it to him. Whilst preparing the fish, Polycrates' servants cut into it and what was inside its belly? None other than the very ring that he had cast into the sea a week ago. An incredible coincidence, indeed. But this could be no more than an urban legend. It was 2,500 years ago, after all. But the same remarkable coincidence has repeated itself in recent years. Two tales come from Norway. The first tells of a man called Waldemar Andersen. Whilst fishing in the North Sea, he caught a large cod and brought it home to prepare for dinner. He cut open the cod's stomach to find a gold earring inside it. He gave it to his wife, who was shocked. She knew instantly that it was the earring that she had lost a week earlier, when it had fallen into the sea. There are plenty more fish in the sea, but to catch the very one that contains your wife's lost earring is nothing short of amazing. So then, what if I told you this second story, also in Norway, took place not over one week, but 10 years? In 1979, Robert Johansson, aged 15, was fishing in a Norwegian fjord. Like our last tale, he caught a large cod that would be fitting for his family's dinner that evening. His grandmother prepared the fish back at home, and in the fish's stomach, none other than a diamond ring. The grandmother instantly recognised it, for it was the same valuable family heirloom that she had lost in the fjords over 10 years ago. And there's more. John Cross of Virginia lost his ring in 1980 during a vicious storm. Two years later, he found it inside a fish served up to him at his favourite restaurant in Charlottesville. Seriously, why do people keep finding their lost jewellery inside fish? Well. How about I explain exactly how in just a moment? But first, one last remarkable story. The chances of you dying on a ship are extremely low, but if your name is Hugh Williams, then it seems your chances of perishing at sea are near impossible. On December the 5th, 1664, a ship sank in the Menai Strait off the coast of Wales. All 81 passengers on board 
died, except one man, named Hugh Williams. Then, on December the 5th of 1785, another ship sank in the Menai Strait, killing all 60 people on board, except one man, named Hugh Williams. Then again, on December the 5th, 1820, a third ship, guess where it sank? The Menai Strait. 25 people drowned, and guess who was the only survivor? Hugh Williams. If that's not enough to float your coincidental boat, then get this. On the 10th of July 1940, a British trawler was destroyed by a German mine. Only two men survived the catastrophe. Both were named Hugh Williams. Coincidence seems to favour misfortune. And nothing exemplifies this more than the fact that five of the world's most infamous leaders, worst dictators and genocidal maniacs to have ever lived Adolf Hitler, Joseph Stalin, Leon Trotsky, Tito, and Sigmund Freud all share something in common. A very, very eerie coincidence indeed. All five men lived in Vienna at the exact same time, before they all became well known. They all walked through the same park every day and regularly drank at the same coffee shop. The five men didn't know each other before moving to or spending time in Vienna. Some of the men even met whilst in Vienna and together hatched their ambitious plans to revolutionise the world in their own image. But these are the five men who collectively changed the history of Europe and arguably the world more than anyone before them. Of the thousands of cities in Europe, what are the chances of them all residing in the same city and frequenting the same coffee shop? What are the chances of five sole survivors in shipwrecks in the same location on the same day of the same month being called the same name? And for goodness sake, what are the chances of numerous people finding their lost jewellery inside fish? What are the chances that a man will be hit in the head by a bullet flying from an explosion of a tree, the same bullet shot at his head many years ago. What are the chances that numerous presidents share so many very close similarities? And we all want to know, what are the chances of a Chinese man disrupting the stock market with his acting? Well, very high in fact. The chances of each of these apparently highly unlikely events happening to you is minutely small. But the chance of it happening to someone in the world is very, very high indeed. Almost 100% in fact. We've all heard of the law of large numbers, but Harvard mathematicians Percy Diaconis and Fred Mustella created a new law called the law of truly large numbers, which states that given a sample size large enough, any outrageous and unimaginable thing is highly likely to happen despite how unbelievable it may be. Just like how the infinite monkey theorem states that a room full of monkeys randomly hitting keys on typewriters will, given long enough, eventually type out the complete works of William Shakespeare. We don't find likely everyday events particularly remarkable. Quite the opposite, we ignore them. But we do highlight unlikely occurrences, making them seem inherently more remarkable. Say you're running a simulation where the chance of a particular event occurring is 0.1%. Therefore, the probability that this highly unlikely event will not happen is 99.9%. But if you repeated this simulation 1000 times, the chance that the event will not happen at least once is 0.999 to the power of 1000, or 36.8%. And that means that the chance of the event occurring once in a thousand simulations is now 63.2%. Quite a bit different from 0.1, isn't it? Run the simulation 10,000 times and the chance of that unlikely event happening is now 99.995%. If two omnipotent mice are to be believed, then planet Earth is one giant simulation, and there are over 7 billion participants running their own simulations every day by simply living out their lives. 
the chance of something truly remarkable and highly coincidental happening among 7 billion people's lives is almost 100%. Given a large enough sample set, i.e. the human race, anything that can happen, will happen. Eventually. But of course, when these very special and seemingly miraculous events do occur, they get global media attention, giving them a very high level of recognition. Yet, we pay no attention to the billions of uneventful things that happen around the world every day. Roughly 7 billion fish are caught from the wild every day by humans, and probably not one of them contains somebody's missing ring today. But when you think about the sheer scale of the world and its inhabitants and all the trillions of things that they collectively do each day, the fact that someone didn't find their lost diamond ring inside a fish today, never mind the past year, actually seems more unbelievable than if somebody did. Thanks for watching. If by some amazing coincidence you enjoyed this video, then click here to support me on Patreon. Becoming a patron helps me to make better videos, and you can get some cool rewards. Click here to watch another video, and if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe for more.